What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we are going to do a full story video. A full story video is when I sit down and take a bunch of videos that tell one overarching story and combine them together into one big video. Now, today's full story video is going to be about Electra. Technically, Greg Rucka's run on the character of Elektra. You see, in 2001, when it came to Marvel Knights, Marvel gave Elektra another series. Now, at first, it was written by Brian Michael Bendis, but after he wrote the first story arc, he had dipped out and you had Greg step in. And so you had Greg begin to basically do the groundwork into hopefully changing the character of Elektra into a new kind of character, putting her in a new direction that's less assassin-like and more being like a regular superhero. And so with that being said, today's video is gonna contain all the different story arcs that he did to do the whole entire change on the actual character. So I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video. What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over Elektra. And now we pick up with Greg Rucka's run. Now remember, we had covered the first story arc that was written by Brian Michael Bendis. But after Bendis had wrote the first story arc, well, he left the title. And you had Greg come in and say, you know what? Let me take over and let me do my thing. Now, when it comes to his first story arc, it's only three issues. It's issues number seven, eight, and nine. Now, with that being said, we also see an artist change as well mid-story. So the first two chapters are being uh, drawn by Chuck Austin and then change over to a different artist. And honestly, I forgot the name of the other artist. I want to say it's Joe Bennett or Joe Burnett. Either way, we are now going to begin our coverage over Greg Rucka's run on Elektra with his three-part story arc. And so getting into the first chapter for today's video, we actually pick up with an Interpol agent better known as Chris Olsen. And Chris is going to be really important for this story arc. Now, for Chris, we do see him arrive in Athens, the capital of Greece. Now, when he does arrive, he is being surrounded by a bunch of women. But we go to see him talk to the main one in charge of this group. Now, her name is Catamidas. Now, Catamidas is trying to get information out of Chris Olsen. Now, at first, we do learn that she's trying to contact somebody. Somebody that could help her with a certain person problem that had happened to her 10 years ago. Now, after a couple more sentences being said to one another, we do learn that Chris has information for Catamidas to contact Electra because she needs the help of Electra to pull off her revenge against a certain group of people. Now, for Chris, he tells her, if you want to contact Electra and you want to pay her to be your top assassin to handle a certain problem for you, you have to use the papers. So here's the info of what you have to do to initiate the contact. After that, it all up to you if she does accept your deal to work for you. And you then have Chris be escorted out of the island back to somewhere else where he came from. Now we do learn that Chris is actually working for another agent in Interpol, and that would be a character known as Gene Valence. Now Gene is also going to be very important, but also he's blackmailing Chris to work for the actual agency because apparently Chris did something in the past. And the problem is if word gets out what Chris had done in the past, Chris will be going away for a very long time. And so, unfortunately, Chris has no choice but to work for Gene. Now, for Gene, he wants all the information that Chris had gathered while being surrounded by Academy's group, where you do have Chris explain that she does have eight guards around her, 
all women, no men at all. But also, he gave the information on how to contact Electra. So now I know where Chris got the info from. But apparently, for Gene, he wants Electra, but we're not technically told why just yet. Now, the next few pages are really more of Electra being contacted by Catamedes. Now, remember, Chris told her, if you want to reach Electra, you're going to have to use the paper. So you have Catamedes being able to put out an ad for Electra to see. And once she does see the ad, you have Electra respond back with another ad. Now, once you have Catamedes see that ad, you didn't have Catamedes be able to access a secure website and use the password that Electra had given her. And so once you have the two characters being able to begin to talk to one another on this secure website, you have Electra now know how much Catamedes is planning to pay her to accomplish some kind of contract. Now you have Electra tell her, hey, you need to pay me the first half and then the rest after I complete the contract. But also let me up here at this location to talk out about what the contract is all about. Now, Interpol was also able to kind of listen in on the conversations that Catamedes and also Electra had on the phone about where they're going to meet up at and how much money they're going to pay, but also how many people she has to kill. We kind of learned that it's going to be four people. Now, with that being said, you then have Gene tell Chris that he has to go back to Athens to go back to Catamedes Island to kind of be there when Electra arrives. And when she does arrive, Chris has to inform Gene when she does arrive. Now, for Chris, he does not want to go because one, it's Electra. She will be able to know when somebody is watching her in a matter of seconds, but also she's very deadly. So once she knows you're there, you're dead and that'll be it. But for Chris, he has no choice because like I said earlier, Gene is blackmailing Chris. He reminds Chris like, hey, listen, if you don't work for us, I'm going to have to charge you for manslaughter and apparently 12 counts of manslaughter. And so Chris has no choice but to go ahead and go back to the island. Now, the ending of this chapter, we do see Electra head over to Catamedes Island. Now, once she does arrive, you have Chris watching her. But like Chris said earlier, Electra is a trained assassin. She will be able to realize that somebody is watching her in a matter of seconds. And so for Chris, Unfortunately, she was able to realize that he was there just like that. Now, Electra does not go after Chris. Instead, she continues on. And when she does, she does meet up with Catamenus. Now, we do learn what this contract is all about. And apparently, 10 years ago, Catamenus was assaulted back in college by a group of men. And so she wants Electra to help her get revenge against those men who had did her wrong 10 years ago. And so as we dive into the second chapter, we actually do pick up with Electra learning about the four men who had assaulted Catamedes back in the past 10 years ago. Now, this is not her telling Electra, like, hey, I want you to kill these guys off. No, she wants Electra to help get her revenge against those four guys. And so for Electra, her assignment is to bring the four men back over to Catamedes so that she can go ahead and get her revenge against those men. Now, something else I do want you to remember is that Electra is Greek, and that's going to be somewhat important in the last chapter of the book, but you do have Electra leave to go complete the assignment. Now, after you have Electra leave the island, she does go back to Athens. And once she does arrive there at the harbor, it is completely surrounded by Interpol agents. Now, Gene believes that he has enough to actually capture Electra. Well, unfortunately, the man 
was completely wrong because you do have Electra being able to get away very easily and get the heck out of there. Like Chris told Jean, Electra is a well-trained assassin. You can't bring her down so easily. Now for Jean, he believed that he should be able to bring her down because she is a woman, but does not realize that she is one heck of an assassin. Now, after that, you didn't have Electra go to Los Angeles. Now, when she does arrive at Los Angeles, you do have Electra go after the first four men who had apparently assaulted Cataminas. The first is a guy known as Miller. Now, Miller is a police officer who is a dirty cop. You know, he kind of helps out the sex workers in the area get by without being arrested if they do give him some service as well. Now you do have Electra pretend to be a sex worker to get close to him and once she does, bam, she got him and now she can bring him over to Katamidis. Now I want to jump back over to Chris because you have Chris at the bar just drinking the night away. But while doing that, he's then confronted by a woman. Now at first, he believes that this woman must be working for Academidas. But she says, no, I'm actually working for Electra. I was sent here to make a deal with you. Now we are not going to learn what that deal is, but we do know that that deal is going to be very important for Chris and Electra down the road. But now we jump back over to Electra, where we see her going to Chicago, going after another one of her four targets. Now, his name is Ramon. And really, at first, it does seem like Ramon is a nice guy. But while he's trying to look around his apartment and fix some things up, you didn't have Electra being able to come from behind to knock him out. Bam. Now she has two of her four targets. Now, for Electra, she has to make sure that these guys get back over to Katamidis alive, not dead. And so you have Electra being able to ship the guys over to Katamidis through a cargo ship, it seems, and make sure those two men that she already took out will not die while being shipped over the world. But either way, they do arrive, and now for Electra, she only has two more targets left to take care of. And really, for Electra, the trend continues on when she goes over to a new location. When she goes over to Houston, she finds another one of her targets. She walks up to him. She gives him a handshake. Next thing you know, bam, he's gone just like that. He's knocked out, and now she only has one more to go. And really, she goes to Manhattan right after taking out her third target. She goes for her last one. And just like the last three, she gets close to him and knocks him out as well, too. And so just like that, bam, 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 bam. All four targets were easily taken out and all delivered back to Katamidis. So now she's able to get her revenge against these men. Now, at the end of the second chapter, you do have Electra go back over to Katamidis to get her money because she was able to accomplish the goal. She was able to bring all four men back over to Katamidis. And of course, she does get paid $4 million, one for each of the four guys that she had brought over. But for Katamidis, Electra is not done yet. She still wants Electra's help for something else. You see, for the four men who had assaulted Katamidas 10 years ago, she wants to get revenge against them, but she wants to torture them. Torture them in the old ancient Greek ways. And so she's kind of hoping that Electra would actually help out. Now, for Katamidas, she's going to pay Electra for helping out if she agrees. But at the same time, she kind of feels like Electra is the best person who's actually suited to do some kind of torturing to the four guys who had assaulted Katamidas. But as we get into issue number nine, this is where we get a flashback. By the way, I just realized I've been calling her by the wrong name completely. I want to say it's kind of Midas. I could be wrong. Either way, we do get a flashback where she explains to us when she was assaulted by these four men. You see, it was their college days. And while being in college, she thought that she'll be okay there. She'll get a good education. She met a couple guys who didn't invite her to a party. Except when she had arrived at that party, 
Unfortunately, she was assaulted. Now, here's the catch. There are four guys there. One of them does not go into the room. He sees what happens and just walks right back out. One of them was in the room already, but he was so freaked out what he was seeing, he just turned his head away. The other two, they continue to assault her. So two of the guys did not do anything at all because of, well, being scared of the other two guys. But for Catamitis, that's not okay at all. They were there and they should have tried to help her, but they didn't. But now all four men must be tortured and killed. Now for Electra, she says no right off the bat because to her, it is completely wrong. But also for Electra, she is an assassin. Your goal is to pay her to take care of people like killing them or possibly kidnapping them. But once you go over to the idea of torturing, to her, it is completely wrong. But also for Electra, she believes that one of the guys is actually innocent because that one guy who walked in the room, saw what was happening and then walked out, to her, she's kind of like, he didn't do anything wrong towards you. Now, technically, he could have had helped you and he did not. But again, he didn't assault you at all. Now, for Electra, she does say no. But you do have Catamitis kind of tell her, if this was you and you were kind of in the same boat, would you ask for help as well? Now, for Chris, we see him meeting up with Gene, and when he does, he informs Gene that he has an informant who knows where Electra is going to be at next. And for Gene, that is great because his main goal is to bring in Electra at this moment. And so, at first, he does not believe Chris, but again, he's kind of like, listen, if you have somebody out there who knows where she's going to be at next, then I have no choice but to go ahead and trust you and hoping that your source is actually reliable. And so you have Chris and Gene agree to go meet up with this informant to figure out where Electra is going to be at next. Now, getting back over to Electra and Catamitis, we do see the two characters, you know, getting ready to torture the four men who were responsible for attacking Catamitis 10 years ago. Now, here is the big catch. You see, Electra has not said yes yet. She was just sitting there right now observing what is happening. And we also see Catamitis go out of her way to get an ancient Greek mask to put on her face. Now, I don't know which mask this is, and I tried my best to figure out which mask she's actually wearing to kind of know more about the history behind it. But unfortunately, couldn't find anything about it. But you do have Catamitis begin to torture the different men there. Now, she does ask Electra one more time, are you going to join? Electra says no again. And she says to Electra, do not interfere then if you are not going to help out at all. But now we jump back over to Chris and Gene. Now remember, Chris told Gene that he knew somebody who could most likely help him figure out where is Electra at. And so you have Chris and Gene go to meet up with this person down a dark alley. Now once they do reach a door, you have Gene walk in first. Sorry, you have Chris walk in first and Gene stays behind him. But Gene should have probably went in first or really stayed outside because soon as Gene does enter the building, someone else from behind grabs him and of course, they drug him. Now, once he does wake up, he realizes that one, he has been bound to a bed, but two, you have Chris and the mysterious woman that Electra hired earlier to help out Chris take photos of Gene as a way to blackmail him, but to also say, hey, you need to back off on Electra. You are not going to come after her at all anymore. Now, the book really does end on a, I don't want to say a bad note or a good note, but just an okay note. Because like I said earlier, one of the four guys did not do anything to Catamitis at all. Matter of fact, they walked in, they got scared, and they left. And so after you have Ramon get tortured for a tad bit, Electra steps in and says, stop. 
You may torture the other three guys for what they have done to you, but him, mm -mm, you cannot torture him at all because technically he did nothing wrong. I mean, yes, he kind of could have helped out, but he walked away. And so he already paid for his crime. And so you have Electra grab him and they walk away. And that's how the book really ends. And it's kind of for me personally, Greg Rucker saying, do you feel like Ramon is innocent or is Ramon guilty? Because if he is guilty, it's because he didn't help her out. But if you say he is innocent because he walked away, it's really more for me, Greg Rucker saying, it's up to you to decide, does Ramon deserve to be punished for not helping her out 10 years ago? But this is where we are going to end the What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over Greg Rucka's Electra run. And guys, we pick up with, I call, volume two of his run. Now, this is actually a great story arc. Now, the main story arc does take place in issues number 11, all the way up to issue number 15. But I kind of want to throw in issue number 10 as well because it's a great prelude that leads into the actual story arc. Now, here's the thing. This is Electra being broken down to the point where she kind of wish that she was dead. Yes, you heard that right. She's been broken down by a new group of characters to the point where she's going to wish she is dead, but possibly going to change her life for what could be the betterment of her own life. Now, with all of that information being said, let's go ahead and jump into issue number 10, the prelude of this story arc called Introspective. Now, let me just say that issue number 10 is not really that great, but we still need it to kind of lead into the main story arc. So in getting into the opening pages of issue number 10, we do pick up Wit Electra arriving back into America, New York. Now, she's flying into the country, so she has to go through the usual questions all like, hey, why are you here in America? How long are you going to be here? Those kind of questions. But after being able to ask those questions and also being able to steal a cab from somebody else who already had that cab, she does head over to her hotel. Now, after getting that cab, she does head over to a nearby hotel. Now, something I should probably mention is that for Electra, at each of the stops she's going to make in this chapter alone, She's going to use different kinds of names to stay undercover. So when she does arrive at this hotel, we do learn that she's going to name Salvatore. Now, when she walks in, it does seem like she is a regular there. Now, the front desk, he's trying his best to give her that great customer service. But for Electra, she's not really the nicest person to talk to. But she does get checked in. She goes to her room. After going to her room, she comes back down down and he tells her you have a message that was left behind he hands her the envelope and she goes on her way to her next stop we do see her go to subway when she dug in the subway she does open up her message and the message says just a number 32 and that's going to be really important for the ending of this chapter but she does continue on with her day but then she heads over to a club. Now, we're not technically told what this guy does for Electra. All we're kind of told is that, like, he's able to get her a place. And we're kind of left to believe that she may use the place for storage or possibly a safe house. Now, while you have Electra and his Danny guy trying to make a deal at the club, you do have Danny say, hey, it seems like you have been followed. And we do see three guys behind her. And so you do have Electra leave the club. And when she does, she's being followed by those three guys. And well, those three guys are instantly killed off by Electra. Only takes her like a few seconds to kill them all. And then she goes on with her day. 
But now we pick up with Electra meeting up with a woman known as D. Now, D was the one who had sent that message to her earlier at the hotel with the number 32. It's a way for her to access this kind of like hideout for this person, D, the home of D. Now, for Electra, she thought the reason why D had contacted her is because she had some work for Electra. But you have D say, No, I don't have any work for you. Really, instead, the reason why I called you here is because I'm telling you, you have too much heat on you right now. Interpol, S.H.I.E.L.D., and the list goes on. Too many people want your head at the moment. And unfortunately, that makes it hard for the different people who give out contracts who want to hire you. Because now you are told as somebody who's unhirable because you have too much heat. If you have too much heat, you're going to bring that heat on us as well. Now, for Electra, she can't believe what she is hearing. But before her and D are able to continue on with their conversation, bam, D is sniped and killed. Now, you have Electra being able to take out the sniper, and she does leave the home of D. But for Electra, it's kind of like, is that true? Like, do I have too much heat on me? Do too many people out there want me dead? And with that kind of heat, will I ever be able to get another contract job again? And so for Electra, she has entered the unemployment phase of her life. But now it's time for us to actually talk about the story arc that I really do love by Greg Rucka. Because you do have Electra walk into this bar in the opening pages of Electra issue number 11. Now, when she does walk into the bar, she is confronted by all these guys. And when they see her, they want to fight her. Really, the first guy goes to her, gets killed off just like that. Gone in a second. And then she says more. It's kind of like she's begging to fight against people. She's begging to kill people. And that is going to be really important for the story arc. But now we have to jump back one month ago where we do pick up with Electra in New York. Now, this is her just getting the newspaper, right? But when it comes to Greg's run, it was established that for Electra, most of the people try to contact her by using the newspaper, by leaving messages on a newspaper for her to find and say, okay, cool. This person right here wants to hire me to kill somebody. That's great. But the problem is, when she goes to check the newspaper, there's nothing there for her, which basically means no one is trying to hire her at the moment. But then we see her go to Miami three weeks prior from the opening pages of this chapter where you do have Electra going to a cyber cafe to use their computer to see if maybe somebody had sent her a message by email to say like, hey, we need your help. Hey. We have a contract for you, but once again, when she goes to that computer, there's nothing there for her. The trend continues on. You know, two weeks prior from the opening pages of this chapter where we pick up with Electra in a hotel room, just continuing to wait for an email to come through. And we see by this point, it's driving her mad. The fact that she has not been able to actually receive any kind of work from somebody out there who would usually hire her for some some kind of work. But then out of nowhere, her computer does go off. She runs over to the computer to only see is one of those like I call sex worker ads, you know, emails. But either way, she's once again, you know, disappointed because she's not able to get a job. And really, when we jump forward to 12 days prior from the present moment, we see that Electra has gotten so desperate that she has worked her way over to the people who had hired other people to contract her out. So, for example, if you were somebody who needed some help, like you wanted someone dead, you would call up somebody who does the contract hiring, who would then call up Electra to get the job done for you. But now it's Electra cutting out the middleman and going to a direct source, hoping that person would have work for her. And so she does go confront this guy who apparently she helped out in the past. But the guy tells her like, listen, 
I don't do contract work. Like if I needed something done, I call up someone to contact you to make the contract. I don't do that kind of work. And unfortunately, I don't have any work for you at the moment. The trend continues on. We see that day after day, she's going to different people, hoping to find somebody who would give her the chance to just have some kind of work. But again, the trend continues on. Each and every single person tells her like, no, no, no. Like, we have no work for you. Please leave us alone. But then we jump to the point where you have Electra go to this dojo where she does find the sensei of the place training his class. Now, this is Electra hitting the point where it seems like she has to fight. She has to battle. She has to see if she still has it as well. The ability to be assassin, the ability to be a fighter. And so you have Electra going up against the dojo. Now, when she, the dojo, she goes up against the sensei of the dojo. Now, while going up against him, she takes him out in a matter of seconds. Even though she knew that she'll be able to do that, it kind of like gives her a breathing moment. Like it pleases her because it still shows she still has it in her. And then she leaves. Now, while she is leaving, somebody was watching her. And this person is working for another character, a character going by the name Locke. And he'll become very important in this story arc. But now we are able to jump back to the present day where we do pick up with Electra after she had taken out every single person in that bar. But then she is confronted by a guy. Now, this is the same guy we saw at the tail end of the last section, the guy who works for Mr. Locke. And really, speaking of Mr. Locke, he's able to enter the room, confront Electra and say, hey, Listen, I did this to you. I knew that sooner or later, you would get to this point right here. I had this plan in motion for four years. And now to see you mentally broken, physically broken, I am now able to go on to the next step of my plan. And that is the end of issue number 11. And we jump into the next chapter. And so then we jump into issue number 12. Now, when we do, we see Electra being drugged and also being put inside a vehicle by Mr. Locke and also his assistant. And then we see the two guys take Electra over to what seems to be the home of Mr. Locke. Now, by the end of this section, we kind of get an idea why this man is coming after Electra for because apparently she has done something to him. Well, we already knew that, but really we learned that Electra had killed off someone he loved. Now we're kind of left to wonder, what is he going to exactly do to Electra? Like, yes, he's going for revenge, but what kind of revenge is he going for to be more exact? So then we see Mr. Locke take Electra into some kind of media room to kind of show her some kind of movie or film that he had put together for her. Now, when he does walk into the room, he's all like, hey, Electra, how are you? And we get the idea that she's still heavily drugged, like she's very loopy to the point where they're kind of able to talk to her, but also show her this movie that they have put together for her. Now, we do learn his actual name is Jeremy Locke. And Jeremy is going to be, like I said, very important for this video. So you have Locke say, listen, for this to work, I need you to focus. Even though you're heavily drugged, I need you to watch this movie. And for Electra, technically, she does not have a choice here. And so she's focused and he begins to show her this film that he had put together. Really more like a slideshow, be more exact. And so then we jump into his slideshow, right? And so the first slide he shows is a picture of her and her father. Now, we've been told that Electra and her father were very close. Now, this book alone is going to give us a better idea of what that relationship was actually like between Electra and her father. But he goes to the next slide, and the next slide is her being in gymnastics and doing a great job there. And so we're still continuing this happy trend, right? 
But then we get into the third slide. In the third slide is when her father had died. And that really did a number to Electra. And so with her being drugged, but also kind of seeing this, she goes in this phase where she's freaking out because she hates the idea of being reminded of her father. But the drugs are kind of bringing her emotions to a level 10. She is heavily saddened with the idea of seeing the picture of her father's body being carried out by the police. But for Jeremy, Jeremy, sorry, he says, no, you are not going to stop looking at this. For this to work, you have to continue to watch what I am going to show you. The next slide is very important for you, Electra. And the next slide is him showing the moment where Electra was killed off by Bullseye. Now, that is a really important moment because we thought as fans back then that she was dead. But then she was brought back to life. And so for Jeremy, he said, you were dead. You should be dead right now. But you're not dead. You're alive again. You were given a second chance in life, a second life to be more exact. And so for Jeremy, that is going to be really important when it comes to him working on the mind of Electra. Then you have Jeremy show her a photo of her after she had came back to life, where it seemed that she was on a mission, where she had killed off 12 people. Now, for Jeremy, when he shows her the first photo, it does seem like it's just her fighting. And for Electra, it's what she loves. She loves the idea of fighting. And so while she was fighting against all those different guys and seeing that photo again, it brought excitement to her. But Jeremy said, you weren't fighting. Next slide. Bam. You were killing. You killed off all those people right there just to get to your target. Is him saying, no, you're not out there fighting against bad guys. No, you're not out there just fighting random people. You're out there being a monster. You're out there being a killer. And then when he goes into the next few slides, it continues to show her different photos of when she had went on different missions to kill off a certain person. But of course, people had got in her way. They were all were killed off the ones who got in her way, including her targets. And it's him saying, look here, look here, look here. You're a killer, you're a killer, you're a killer. That's all you are. You are a killer. That's all you're good for. And for Electra, again, with her being drugged, her emotions are on level 10, but she begins to freak out and wanting to break out and really attack Jeremy, kill off Jeremy, and then try to break away. And so she tries her best. The drugs are somewhat slowing her down, but for Jeremy, his assistant comes right in time to help him out, to bring her back down, but to also give her another dose to make her calm down again, to bring her back to that calm level so that they are able to continue on with their so-called treatment. So once you have Electra wake back up, we begin to learn why Jeremy is doing all of this for. And the reason why? Because he lost the woman he loves because of Electra. And no, she was not her target. You see, for Electra, she had a different target. And what she was going to do was to kill off her target. She put enough poison on a piece of paper and her target was going to touch that paper. That poison was going to enter through his skin to kill him off just like that. Now for Electra, she thought, okay, you know what? I'll put enough poison to kill off one person. And even though he did die, some of that poison was still there on that paper. And so when it came to Jeremy's wife, she found that paper. She touched the paper. She got the poison and she died 17 days later. This is Jeremy saying, look at you. You are a killer. You are a monster. But you're also killing off innocent people who were not technically involved in your crusade to go out and get different targets to make money. Your targets are your targets. But innocent people are now being killed off just for you to get to your targets. And so for Jeremy, he wants to teach her a lesson. Now, he's not going to kill her at all. Instead, he's going to leave her out in the middle of the desert. The reason why? Because he says, I'm not a killer. 
I am not a murderer like you. But instead, I want you to realize what you are. You are a monster. You are a killer. And you do not deserve to live at all. And so he leaves her out in the middle of the desert. And the reason why? Because he's kind of hoping that one, the desert will kill her. Or at least two, she'll kill herself off. Because now she realized that she's truly a horrible person. And so getting into the next chapter... We do pick up with Electra just walking through the desert day and night, just walking and walking. And it seems like she doesn't want to die just yet, but that's going to change as we go through this chapter alone. But getting back over to Jeremy Locke, we see that he was not the only person who was trying to come after Electra. You see, we do learn that there were other people who were also part of the planning. So you have characters like Nolan Curtis, Colonel Liam Fisher, and also Valerie Vasson. Now, these three characters, they're very upset with Jeremy because they wanted to kill Electra. Like, they wanted him to capture her, bring her here, they go there, and then they kill her off just like that. But to hear that he let her go out in the middle of the desert because he does not want to be labeled as a murderer, he's kind of like, no, I have a different plan in mind for her. And really, he tells him, like, I told you guys, I will not be involved in her death in that kind of way. Like, I'm not going to be the one to pull the trigger. If she dies out there in the desert, fine, cool. If she kills herself, fine, cool. But I will not pull a gun to kill off the person, even though she hurt you guys. And she also hurt me as well. I am not going to be labeled as a killer like she is. But getting back over to Electra, you have Electra continuing to walk in the desert. Now, as she's walking through the desert, she's then confronted by a snake. Now, you would think that she would allow the snake to go ahead and kill her off. She does not. Instead, she actually captured a snake. And this is going to show us that, yes, Electra has reached that point where she's actually considering to killing herself. Now, I want to jump back over to Jeremy and to his crew as well, the other people who were also involved in the planning, because we get a better idea. The crew is not really actually happy with Electra being free because every single person had lost somebody close to them in some kind of way. For example, for the colonel, he lost a group of men. That was kind of his crew. They were all killed off by Electra. For Valerie, she lost her husband. You know, the trend continues on that each person in this group had lost someone or multiple people to Electra. And so because of that, they're kind of like, no, she deserves to die for what she has done. And so this kind of leads into the other members of this group beginning to work away from Jeremy. They're kind of like, no. What you did is wrong. You took our money, took our plan, and changed it for your betterment. And that right there is not okay at all. But I want to jump back over to Electra because you have Electra still with that snake. Now, for Electra, while being with the snake, like I said earlier, she has now entered that part of her mind where she's okay with the idea of dying. She's okay with allowing the snake to bite her and kill her off. Except, when she goes to let the snake go, the snake runs away because the snake was hella freaked out for what she has done to it. And so for Electra, it's kind of like, dang, I finally had a way to get out of this life. That snake was going to grant my wish. But it also shows that Electra is not really up to par to kill herself. And so she's kind of hoping that something or someone will actually give her that pleasure. Now, we do do a small quick check in with Jeremy and we do see that, well, Jeremy is still with the same people and they're kind of still talking about what to do with him, but to also do with Electra. Now, with Jeremy, he does tell them like, hey, listen, 
If you want to find out where Electra is at, she's at this location right here in the middle of the desert. So we kind of see the other members of this group kind of considering going out there in the middle of the desert to find Electra to just bring her back over to where they are or possibly find her and just kill her off. But when we go back over to Electra, we do see her continuing to walk through the desert. Now, here's a big catch. You see, as she is walking through the desert, she begins to have this flashback of her father. Now, we were left to believe at first that her father and her were very close. Instead, this flashback kind of says that's not true. Her father used to abuse her. You see, when she was learning how to be a great gymnast, Every single time she made a mistake, he would beat on her and then kind of be like, hey, listen, you know, I'm sorry what I did to you, but I had to do it as a way to keep you going. And so after having that flashback, we kind of see that she looks at her father as a monster, but she also sees herself as a monster as well. And then she falls into the sand of the desert. Now, I want to jump back over to Jeremy real quick. And the reason why, because you have Jeremy now talking to his assistant, and his name is Philip Carson. Now, for Philip Carson, he wants to know why his boss, Mr. Locke, did not just go ahead and hand over Electra to the police. And also, they have the evidence as well. Once they had captured her, they should have gave her over to the police, but also gave that evidence as well. She would have been locked up. But he said, listen, all that evidence we had on her, it's not good enough to have her locked away. But also, that is not my end goal for Electra. And so we kind of learned that for Mr. Locke here, Jeremy, he has a different goal in mind for Electra. The question is right now, what is that goal? Now, when it comes to the other member of the inner circle, the four people who came together and said, hey, you know what? We are going to get revenge against Electra. The other three say, you know what? You messed up, Locke. You should have killed her. And because you did not kill her, we are now going to step in. We're going to find her and we're going to kill her. Now, let's not forget that one of the members of the inner circle is a colonel. And so it does seem like he's part of some army. We're not technically told if he is part of an army or some kind of private group. But either way, his men were able to find Electra just like that out in the middle of the desert. And he tells guys, keep your distance, but watch her will be there very soon. So now you have the rest of the inner circle working their way over to where they are at and to hopefully kill off Electra once and for all. And so as we enter the fifth chapter of the story arc, we actually do see Jeremy being told that, hey, they found her. And so now he knows what comes next. That one, she is alive, but two, she might be killed off by the other members of this inner circle very soon. Now, I want to jump back over to Electra because remember, at the end of the last chapter, she was only found by a few guys who worked with the Colonel, and the Colonel is one of the members of the inner circle who wanted to kill her. And so, you have these guys kind of just messing with her body while she is mostly knocked out. Not completely, because the longer they continue to mess with her, well, she slowly starts waking up again. And so by the end of the section, she is fully awake. And so by the time you have the inner circle arrive at that location, they find all the men who were supposed to just watch Electra all killed off. They all have been murdered by her. Guys, I say it, murdered by her. And so when they arrive, they're freaking out. But they also realize that she has taken all the gear of one of the guys, including the radio, which means that she can overhear any calls on their radios at the moment. Now, when you do have the inner circle arrive, she starts shooting at them. Now, two members of the inner circle, they were able to get to cover, but one of them, he was not, and he was shot in the knee multiple times by Electra. And so he's kind of left out there just trying his best to crawl over to the other two who found some cover. 
but they're now technically sitting ducks. Now, the colonel was able to call in another team to hopefully help out with this kind of situation. And really, it does not work at all because you do have the other team arrive, right? They arrive with a helicopter. You think like, okay, cool. You have your chopper. Maybe just maybe you can get out of there. No. Electra takes out the pilot just like that. The chopper, it crashed and burned. So there goes their only way out. And so now the third team has to do their best to protect the inner circle group right now who had decided to come after Electra. And so you have Electra just go ahead and kill off every single member of this third team that came in thinking they should be able to actually handle her. And it really shows that, hey, Electra is not in that same mind state as she was earlier in the story arc. Like right now, she's back to her old ways again. And she's taking everyone out who tried to come at her. But after taking out the entire third team, it's once again just now the last two surviving members of the inner circle just stuck out there in the middle of the desert. And really, it's not the last two surviving members of the inner circle because the guy got shot in the leg earlier is still alive, but you do have Electra take out the colonel. And when she does that, she gives the last two members of the inner circle a fair chance to hopefully make it back to some kind of city nearby in the desert area because the last two now the guy who can not walk at all and the other person is just a woman who wanted revenge against Electra because, well, she killed off her husband. But now for Electra, her new main target is to go after Jeremy once again. And so she is able to make it all the way back over to his house. And this leads us into the final chapter of today's video. And so as we get into the final chapter for today's video, at first, it does seem like Electra is going to kill off Jeremy. Now, the reason why she's going to kill him off is kind of like first, the whole idea that he did drug her, he did kidnap her, and he did kind of leave her out in the middle of the desert. Yes, that was all his fault. But she also believes that he was the one who had sent those soldiers after her. He says, no, that was not me. That was not my doing. Like that was someone else in my group who felt like you deserve to die. Now, that right there is really important because it's not him saying like, hey, I want to kill you. Hey, I think you should be killed off. Hey, you know what? You are a horrible person. Instead, it's him saying, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to change you. And this leads into what he is trying to do for the character of Electra. I want you guys to think back to what I said earlier when it came to Jeremy. He said, listen, you had two lives. And both of those lies, you were a murderer. It's time for you to change. That's the whole point of this. He wants to make Electra a better person, a better person in this world, because in both of her lies, she was a killer. She was an assassin. It's time to be something else. But he had to mentally break her down to kind of show her what he wanted her to see. Like, hey, you are a great assassin. You are a great fighter. But what if you use those skills for something else besides just killing? Like, yes, you can fight against people, but why do you have to kill? Now, for Electra, she's still at that point where she wants to die. She's even begging uh, Mr. Locke's assistant to go ahead and kill her off. But he said, no, we're not going to kill you. We're here to change you. We're here to make you a better person. And so the book kind of ends with her now staying with Locke, staying with Carson as well. And hopefully we can see a change in Electra. What's going on there, YouTube? Welcome back to another comic book video. Okay, so it's time for us to continue our coverage over Greg Rucka's Electra Run. And now we pick up with a two-part story arc called Standing Outside the Temple 
in the rain. Now, this two-part story arc does take place in Elektra issue number 16 and 17 in the 2001 Elektra series. Now, this also kind of continues what we saw at the tail end of our last video. Let me explain. You see, there was a character known as Jeremy Locke who had lost his wife thanks to Electra. Now, when I say he lost his wife, I'm not saying that she was one of Electra targets. What I'm saying is that she was an innocent person that was killed off on accident when it came to Electra going after one of her actual targets. But either way, for Jeremy, he began to learn more and more about Electra and kind of realized that, well, She's a killer. She's a monster. She is an assassin. But for Jeremy, he feels like he can actually change Electra. And the reason why, because he says, listen, you died once. You died by the hands of Bullseye. But then you were brought back to life thanks to the hand. And the problem is you use your second chance in life to pick up where you left off at, to be a killer, going around killing off people left and right. And so for Jeremy, his goal is to begin this process to hopefully change Electra into a better person, somebody who's not just a flat out killer, a flat out bloodlust crazy person out there in the world. And so now we are beginning to see the change in Electra. And it starts with this two-part story arc. Now, we do see that in the opening pages of this story arc, we're not actually seeing Jeremy go out of his way to figure out how to fix Electra. It is actually his assistant, somebody known as Philip Carson. Now, Carson apparently knows someone, a sensei, who can actually teach Electra to go down the right path. And so we see him actually talking to this person. And apparently, this person at first kind of like, hmm. I don't know, show me what you got. But then after seeing a few photos of Electra, this person is actually intrigued to begin to see Electra work, to kind of see if they want to, you know, teach her. And so when we jump over to Electra, we see Jeremy say, hey, listen, Philip found somebody for you, and I need you to get in the car right now and come with me so that you are able to see this person. And so as we go into the last few pages of this actual book, we do pick up with Electra, Jeremy, and Philip going to the dojo of this new sensei. Now, we do learn that his actual name is Mr. Drake. Now, Drake here can see that Electra is a great fighter, a great assassin. She has a lot of skills, but he also realized she has no heart. And she also has much to learn. And so for Mr. Drake, he's kind of like, hmm, you know what? Let's fight. And you have the two characters actually fighting. But while fighting, you can see that Mr. Drake is on a whole new level. And so unfortunately for Electra, she's not able to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drake. It's really more Drake just playing with her. But while playing with her, he begins to call out different names. Now, all the different names that he is calling out are different people that she had killed off over the years. And so it's him saying like, hey, you may have killed off that person and that person and that person. But like you went after people who were below your level. I'm somebody who's above your level, who can give you an actual challenge, somebody who can easily take you down. Now, for Electra, she does not believe that. She believes that she can win, but he has to teach her that lesson. And so you have Electra try to use her weapon against Drake, and Drake uses hands and bends the blade on her weapon. And he's all like, see, you still have a lot to learn. That was a sharp blade coming right at me, and I was able to literally bend it just like that, a technique that I see you don't know how to do yet. And once you have Electra see that, she realized that Drake is, you know, above her. And so she gets down on her knees and begins to ask him to begin training her. And he says, hell no, and he walks away.
And so as we dive into the last chapter for today's video, we do pick up with Electra, Philip, and also Jeremy leaving, except you have Electra say no, she is staying. And the reason why? Because she wants to convince, she wants to prove to Mr. Drake that she'll be a great student to take in. And so she begins to stand outside his actual dojo. The whole idea of the story arc being called standing outside the temple in the rain is because of this moment right here. She is standing outside in the rain, rain, sorry, hoping for Mr. Drake to actually accept the offer to begin teaching her. Now, when you have Drake walk outside his dojo, he sees Electra, and when he does, he knows what she wants. He knows that she wants him to accept her offer to make her become his student, to learn how to fight. But for Drake, he's all like, no, I don't want to teach you. I don't want anything to do with you. And so he walks away. Now for Electra, she's not going to take no for an answer. And so you have Electra begin to follow Drake around. Now while doing that, you then have Electra realize that Drake is trying to spend time with different people of his neighborhood. And so because of that, she kind of realized, okay, maybe that's what he wants me to do. Maybe he wants me to be completely different, to not be that killer person. Now, she's on the right path, but at the same time, she's not completely getting it because she also believes that if she does some kind of work outside of fighting, outside of killing, then maybe Drake will accept her. And so you have Electra trying to paint his building for him, but you have Drake said, no, that's not it. And also, you need a lot of help to fix your soul. And so for Electra, she continues on to hopefully convince Drake to take her in. But then you have Drake sit down with Electra and say, listen, the reason why I can't take you in because you have no room for me to teach you. Meaning that thanks to the hand and also your past trainers, you are completely filled of knowledge, of your knowledge. Now I said your knowledge. And the reason why, because it's Drake saying, if you want to learn from me, you have to make room for me. But also my kind of training is completely different than what you have gone through in the past. And so you have Drake once again, walk away. Now, there were a bunch of kids who kind of been around Electra the entire time she'd been outside Drake's dojo. Either way, when it came to kids, they had kicked a soccer ball at Electra and she was able to grab it in time. Now, for the kids, they believe that she may lash out at them, but except instead, she begins to play with them. And that was Drake's big point of his lesson. If you want to learn from me, you have to make room for me. You have to get rid of what you have learned in the past. The whole idea of being a killer. The whole idea of being a weapon for other people. Once you have made room for me, then I can begin to teach you. And so right now, because you have Electra not lashing out at the kids, but actually playing with them, you have Drake accept the offer. So you know what? It's now time for your training. And this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please... Okay, so we're going to continue our coverage over Electra. Now, technically, we have been covering Greg Ruckus' run on the character for a short while now. Now, something I should also mention is that Greg Ruckus' run actually takes place in the middle of the 2001 Electra series that was really started off by Brian Michael Bendis. The problem was Brian Michael Bendis did one story arc for Electra and then he left the title completely, which then led Marvel saying, hey Greg, do you want to take over? And he said yes. Now for Greg, he did a great job, but the main goal for Greg was to take the character of Electra and give her a new purpose. The whole idea of saying she's not just a top-notch assassin, that she can be something else, something better for the actual world, to lead her in a better direction for the actual character. Now, for Greg Rucka, his run was very short on Electra. 
What I mean is that this is going to be the last Greg Rucker story for Elektra because right after this story arc, somebody else took over. Now, we might go ahead and just continue our coverage over Elektra so that we are able to say that we have covered the entire 2001 series because it's only like 35 or 36 issues and technically we're already in the 20s by this point, thanks to Greg Rucka. Now, something else I should also mention is that for this whole story we're going to do right now, originally, it was a four-part story arc, but then I guess things happened behind the scenes. They needed a fifth chapter, so technically, it is a five-part story arc. Now, Something else I should also mention is that in the middle of the story arc, part two and part three, it is actually done by a different artist. Now, for me personally, I did not really like the artwork done in part two and part three. For me, part one, four, and five, beautiful. Two and three, eh, kind of felt tad bit weird and honestly kind of wondering why in the world they did that for. But it was only used as a way to kind of tell the backstory for the current sensei for Elektra, better known as Drake. Either way, we can now officially dive into the final story arc for Greg Rucka's run on Elektra. Now, the opening pages for the first chapter that does take place in Elektra issue number 18 is really kind of picking up where the first story arc for Greg Rucka, or really the first major story arc for Greg Rucka, had officially left off at. Let me explain. You see, in that first major story arc for Greg, he introduced a character known as Jeremy Locke. Now, Jeremy Locke was actually a character who had lost his wife thanks to Elektra. You see, when it came to Electra, she is or was a top-notch assassin that could be hired. And so somebody hired her to go after one of her targets, which she actually did. The problem was Jeremy's wife kind of got killed off by just being nearby the actual scene. And so because of that, for Jeremy, his main goal was to change Electra into a better person by putting her through a process saying, listen, you had two chances in your life, and unfortunately, you used both of your chances to be this killer. Why not try to be something good for the world? Why not try to no longer be a killer in this world? And so for him, his main goal was to actually change her. Now, we did learn later on in that story arc that he was actually working with three other people who also wanted to get revenge against Elektra because they also lost people close to them because of her. Now, one of those three guys was actually a colonel, and he was able to bring in a small army of soldiers to kind of help out to go kill off Electra. Now, for Jeremy, he didn't want Electra to die, but the other three, they wanted her to die. And so they went after her after Jeremy had let Electra go. And so when it came to the colonel and his armed forces, well, they got murdered completely by Electra. They did not stand a chance at all against her. And so as we dive into the final story arc for Greg Rucka, it picks up where that story arc really left off at. Because as we dive into the open page for the story arc, we pick up with some people examining the dead bodies of those soldiers that were killed off by Elektra in that story arc. But while they're doing that, they have no idea that technically... They're being watched, or not really being watched, but somebody else is there also examining those bodies as well. Somebody who belongs to the hand. Now, this guy, he's able to actually hide his presence, so no one truly knows that he is there. But while he goes to examine all the dead bodies, he was able to realize that these people were killed off by Elektra. And so it kind of tells us the hand is beginning to come after Elektra very soon. Now we do jump over to Elektra and we see her with a character known as Drake. Now Drake was a character that Greg Rucka had introduced in a earlier story arc, who's right now the current sensei for Elektra. You see, 
For Drake, her main goal is to change Electra away from what the hand in the chase had taught Electra over the years. The whole idea of you're an assassin, you're a killer, you love violence, you love blood, you love fighting. Like getting away from those things right there and going into a new direction in her life. And so for Drake in the last story arc, she had to tell Electra that your body and mind has been completely filled up by the hand in the chase. If you want me to be able to teach you, to train you, to make you a better person, you have to clear your mind. Now, for Drake, she realized that she can't change the fighting style of Elektra, but she can change the mindset of Elektra. And so for Elektra, even though she's kind of opened up her mind to allow Drake in, she's still kind of holding on to what the hand and also the chase had taught her. And so it's up to Drake to kind of move her away from those things. Now I want to jump over to Valerity and also Nolan. Now these are two characters that Greg gave us back in that major story arc where these two characters were part of that inner circle who had lost people thanks to Elektra and they wanted to get revenge against her. Now as you saw, Jeremy was not really down with the idea of killing Elektra but the rest of the group, they were down with killing her and so they went after her. Now for Elektra Electra, she let these two guys live. The problem is that for Nolan, he has let everything go. Like he is not down with the idea of continuing to hunt down Electra. But for Valerity, she wants to continue to hunt down Electra because she had lost a loved one because of that woman. And so for her, she's kind of like, how can you just give up so easily? Now, she also mentions that she can tell that Jeremy had fallen in love with her, Electra, and that is why he let her go. Now, I want you to actually hold on to that for the later chapters of this story arc. But while you have the two characters actually talking, they are then confronted by three members of the hand. Really just one at first. The other two come in later. But for this one right here, his main goal is to gather information from Nolan and also Valerity's mind to kind of help him figure out where in the world can he find Electra. And so after he's able to go through their minds, he begins to learn everything he needs to know. Not everything, but a good start in his adventure to hopefully find Electra. Now, I want to jump over to Drake and Electra, who are currently at a playground right now. Now, this playground has been completely trashed over time. And so for Electra and Drake, their main goal is to actually clean up the place. Now, this leads into Drake kind of giving us the origin of Electra. Not the complete origin, but the key points we need to understand what Drake is trying to do for the actual character, better known as Electra. You see, for Drake, she does bring up the fact that Electra had joined the Chase. Now, the Chase is another organization out there that usually fights against the hand. They are literal enemies to one another. Now, the thing was for the Chase is that when they took Electra in, they taught her their ways. But then after a while, they had kicked her out. Now, after she was kicked out, she had joined the Hand. Now, let's not forget, the Hand is a ninja organization, but they worship a demon better known as the Beast. Now, once you had Electra join the Hand, her main goal was to dive into the darkness of the actual group, but not dive too deep into the actual darkness. She wanted to be a light to bring up the good in the actual hand. The problem was, though, over time, she realized she could not fight her way out, and she became their perfect weapon, their perfect death. But then it got to a point where they no longer looked at her as the perfect death. They kind of looked at her as something different, not even a ninja, something completely wrong with her. But either way, for Electra, she had left. Now, with her leaving, she now had the skills and the tricks from both organizations to use out against the world, against all her different targets, to become that top-notch assassin. And so, while you have Drake bring up all these different facts, it's really more Drake saying, like, I know you very well. And I know you so well, you're going to be very surprised when I tell you my actual origin story. But for Electra, she kind of believes that Drake is actually mocking her, making fun of her past life. 
But you have Drake say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm here to tell you I used to be part of the chase as well. And so for Drake, it's her saying like, listen, you've been in the darkness for so long that you forgot what the light is like, what is life is like. And so you have Drake saying it's time to bring you out of that darkness, to turn you into what seems to be an actual human, not one of them. And so you didn't have the two characters being able to actually clean up the entire playground. But while you have Electra believing that things are going great for her, she has no idea the hand has now begun to hunt her down. And so when we jump back over to Nolan and Valerity, we kind of find out that they're both dead because the hand was able to collect information about Electra from their minds. And now they're moving on to someone else to get more information about Electra to hopefully find her. But now we have to jump into the next chapter. Now, the next chapter, we actually pick up the three members of the hand making their way over to the next location for them. Now, their actual names are Shadow, Thought, and Pain. Now, we don't need to know more about these actual characters. They're really only being used as a way to wrap up Greg's run on what he's trying to do with the character of Elektra. And that's really it. But either way, they do kill off this guy to take his vehicle so that they're able to get to their next location in a better amount of time. Now, I want to jump back over to Drake and Electra. And you see the two characters right now trying to feed the homeless while working at this shelter. Now, while working there, you have Drake ask Electra to tell a joke. Like, hey, you know, Electra, tell a joke about everyone happy here in the building. The problem is for Electra is that she's still learning how to be a regular person. She's still learning how to have a normal conversation. And so to tell a joke is kind of like a huge step for her. And unfortunately, she's not really good at all when it comes to telling jokes. And so for Electra, she feels embarrassed. But at the same time, it's Drake showing her like, hey, that's part of life. Like it's part of being a human, being embarrassed when your jokes don't actually work out. Now, once they're able to get back over to the dojo, this kind of leads into the origin of Drake to kind of get a better understanding who she is. But before we are able to actually learn the actual origin of Drake, it kind of continues with the whole idea of Drake saying that Electra, if you want to change, you have to open up. But for Electra, it's hard to do that. Now, it's not her saying like, it's the hand, it's the chase kind of holding on to me. It's really more her saying like, I did a lot of bad things in my past. Like, I had killed off a lot of people, so many people, it can fill up the entire dojo that belongs to Drake. But for Drake, it's kind of like, you don't understand that I actually know what you're talking about. And so it's her saying, Electra, the problem for you is that you're having a hard time letting go and you're having a lot of regret, but also you feel bad for everything you have done in the past. But that's also completely normal. Now, once you have the two characters kind of finish their fighting scene at the actual dojo, it's now time for Drake to say, here is my origin story to kind of show you that it is possible to actually change. It is possible to move on from the hand and also the chase as well. Now, to get into the actual origin of Drake, we have to jump back over to 1947. Now, she tells us that her father had fought in the war, and while being in Japan, he had met a group of people. And with that group of people, he had begun to learn different fighting styles. And so, when he came back home to America, he began to teach his kids as well, starting off with James, and then James kind of teaching his sister in private. But either way, over time, his son James began to pick up everything his father had learned in Japan. And so after that, you then had Drake's father take both his kids back over to Japan to meet members of the chase. And once they met James, Drake's brother, they were kind of like, hmm, you know what? 
He'll be great for our actual group, and so will Drake's father. Now, Stick was there. And remember, when it comes to Stick, he's the guy who had trained Elektra, trained Daredevil, and most likely other characters out there as well. But Stick was there. And so now we are establishing that Stick had also trained Drake. But not just yet. You see, when it came to Drake and also her brother James and their father, when they had arrived at the temple for the chase, they only trained Drake's brother, James, and her father, not her. And the reason why? Because she was a girl, especially a black girl. Because in that time for Japan, they already hated the idea of white people kind of taking their culture. But now you have a black person coming in, it's extra hard. But you're a black woman, it's like three times hard for just a regular white person. And so they did not train her at all. They kind of kept her away to say, all you can do is just clean our dishes, clean our rooms, and that is it. Now, overnight though, in the nighttime, her brother James would actually teach her the ways that he had learned from the chase. Except one of the knights that were out there training, Stick saw them. And we're now establishing that Stick knew way back then that Drake, when she was a young girl, when she arrived, her father and James at the temple of the chase, he knew that she was special. And so he said, hmm, we got a problem because you not allow James to cheat somebody who's not actually part of our group any of our techniques at all and here you are training your sister and so for stick he gave both drake and james a test by saying listen because you were teaching her one of y'all have to leave one of y'all have to get kicked out and so he said the last person standing will have to stay here while the other one gets kicked out and so for drake and james they had a fight against an army of warriors from the chase now by the end of that battle james fell down he's out but Drake, she stood up. She stayed up, sorry. And so she was able to stay with the chase while you had, well, James being kicked out of the actual organization. Now, for Drake, she was able to stay there alongside with her father. But it was very short-lived. And the reason why? Because she had killed off another member of the chase. Now, it was a complete accident, but she still broke a rule. And so she got kicked out as well just like that. Now, like Electra, she had joined the hand, kind of thinking that if she joins the hand, she'll be able to give back at the chase, but she also wanted to make sure that she did not go too far into the actual darkness the hand gives people, like Electra tried to do in her own timeline. The problem was for Drake is that they put her inside a pit of darkness to fight against the darkness in her heart. And so while getting down there and fighting her opponent, she had killed off her brother. Now that was a huge moment for her, but it kind of did push her into the darkness the hand wanted her to have. And so once she had killed off her brother and once she became an actual member of the hand, it led to her fighting against some members of the chase. And she had killed off four members of the chase. And one of them was her father. So now she had killed off her brother. And now she had killed off her father. And so after doing that, she kind of realized that she had to step away. The hand was bringing her down into their own darkness. And so for Electra, back in the present day, she's wondering how can herself get to that point where Drake is at at the moment. The whole idea of being able to be pulled out of that darkness. And you have Drake saying like, it's not going to be easy. At first, you have to want it. You have to want to have that ability to pull yourself out of the darkness. But once you do that, you then have to work at it. And so for Electra, she begins to cry because she wants to leave that darkness behind. The whole idea of being part of the assassins, being part of the hand, part of the cast, being that killer who loves blood and violence. She wants to leave all of that behind. And so for Drake, she can tell that now Electra is on that right path, but now she has to continue to go down that right path. But to wrap up this chapter, we do see the hand arriving at the home of Jeremy Locke. And of course, they're coming after Electra. They need more information about her to figure out where exactly she is at.
And so now we have to dive into the third chapter where we actually pick up with a character known as Carson. Now remember, when it comes to Carson, he's kind of like the bodyguard slash assistant for Jeremy Locke. And so Carson right now just by himself chilling, having a good old time relaxing. But then he's confronted by the hand. Now remember, the hand trying to find Electra. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to go to each person that she had contact contact with in the last few days, weeks, or months to hopefully find the actual location of where she's hiding out at. And so you then have the hand being able to take down Jeremy and begin the process of going into his mind to figure out who to go to next to hopefully figure out where she could be at. And so now we jump back over to Electra and Drake. Now this is Drake telling Electra like, hey, you have officially graduated. Like, you are officially done now. Now, for Electra, she cannot believe what she's hearing at the moment because she still believes that Drake still has to teach her more things about changing her life. But for Drake, it's kind of like, no, I only brought you in to put you on the path. It's now for you to take your path and push forward by yourself. I can no longer hold your hand, but also I already saw some things in you that has completely changed. And so for Electra, the question is now, can she continue to go down the path that Drake has opened up for her to officially take? Now we jump back over to the hand and we see that Carson has been officially taken out, but you didn't have Jeremy there now going through the actual same process that Carson went through. And so with the hand, they're diving deeper into the mind of Jeremy to figure out where in the world Electra is actually at. And so while doing that, we're now establishing that for Jeremy, he had begun to fall in love with Electra, which for me personally is kind of wild because honestly, he only found her because he wanted to change her because what he what she has done to his wife in the past. But that's really it. And so for me personally, it's kind of weird to see him fall in love with the character so fast. But Either way, you do have the hand being able to figure out that right now Electra is with Drake. And so they take Jeremy to kind of use him as a way to get to Electra. Now, they believe that Carson is officially dead. But once you have the hand leave, you have Carson be able to get enough strength to pick up the phone to call Drake. And so as we jump back over to Electra and also Drake, you have Drake continue to push Electra away, kind of like, hey, this is your graduation. Matter of fact, here's some weapons I made for you to replace the ones I broke a while back. Now, these new weapons, they're not really made to kill. They're made to be used in battle, but more as a way to take down your opponents without actually killing them to kind of show that Electra is now going on a new path, a path more like a hero rather than a villain or anti-hero. Either way, while you have Electra continue to pack her things up, the phone rings. It is Carson warning Drake to warn Electra the hand is coming after them right now. Now for Drake, she says, leave now and I'll try my best to hold them off. But for Electra, she's kind of like, no, if I had taken this path because of you, I am going to continue down the path. And on this path, that means I have to protect other people, people like you. And so now we're going to see Drake and also Electra try to make that big stand against the hand when they do arrive. And so as we dive into the ending parts of the third chapter, we do pick up with the hand arriving at the dojo that belongs to Drake. Now, when they arrive, they come full force. They are planning to bring down the entire place, except when they walk into the actual building, well, they are actually confronted by Electra and Drake, who are ready to go. And this leads into the fourth chapter for me, the artwork does get a whole lot better. And so now we dive into the fourth chapter. Now the fourth chapter, the first half of the fourth chapter is really more just Electra 
fighting against the hand. It's her with Drake trying her best to fight against the hand and their army of soldiers that came with them. Now, while you have both sides fighting against each other, I really want to focus more on Elektra here because Elektra, she's getting caught up in the actual battle, kind of letting her emotions control her body, control her mind, control her moods. Because you have Drake say, hey, Elektra, I need you to focus here. If we are going to be able to actually win this battle to pull this off, we got to be on our A game. We got to be on the same page. But the problem is Electra is not on the same page. She is not on her A game. She's getting caught up in the actual battle because the hand represent her past that she's trying to get rid of, trying to move away from. And so in the middle of the battle, she does get captured by the hand. Now, luckily for Electra, Drake was there and Drake was able to actually free her. But once you have Drake being able to save Electra from the hand, we kind of see the hand kind of give us some hints of why they are here. One, it does seem like they want to bring Electra in back into the actual organization, but at the same time, it seems like they are very disappointed that when it comes to Electra, that she has now been taught or trained by the betrayer. Of course, talking about Drake here. But you then have the hand reveal that they have Jeremy. And they say, listen, if you want him back, meet us in your last massacre area where you had your last massacre at. And of course, this is a callback to that major story arc that truly begun the run of Greg Rucka, where he tried to change the character, where she fought against the soldiers back in that major story arc, where the story had actually started off at. And so you have the hand leave with Jeremy, and so you have Elektra and Drake leave the JoJo because it got caught on fire, it's burning down, and they have to get the heck out of there. Right after you have Elektra and Drake being able to get away from the actual uh, dojo, we do learn that Drake has been poisoned. You see, when it came to Elektra letting her emotions take over, and when she was captured for a brief moment by the hand, it gave Drake the chance to save her life, but while doing that, Drake got poisoned. And so, this is Drake dying right in front of Electra, but she tells Electra, listen, if you go after them, you have to make sure when you go at them, you can't go like you did in the dojo, letting your emotions take over your body. You have to go in there with your A game. You have to go in there knowing that you'll be able to actually take them down because you are a warrior, a warrior I have actually trained very well. But she also says a warrior does not fight just for fighting. A warrior fights for a cause. Know your cause before you go into that actual battle. And so then we jump over to Elektra meeting up with Carson. So now we know he's still alive for the time being. But you have Carson and her agree to work together to go after the hand to hopefully save Jeremy before he's killed off by the hand. And so you have the two get everything they need to make sure they have at least a fighting chance against the hand. And so the last few pages of this chapter is really being used as a way to set up the final chapter of this book, but to also have the hand kind of wondering, will Electra actually show up to save the life of this man? And so you do have the hand kind of wondering, like, does Electra actually have feelings for her? Now, for me personally, she should not have any feelings for this guy at all in that kind of way because she barely knows him. And really, they only spend like two weeks together and that's really it. But either way, we do see her and Carson getting ready to fight against a hand. He'll stay behind and be a sniper to kind of give her some cover while she goes down there to fight against a hand to hopefully be able to save Jeremy's life. And this leads into the final chapter. And so now we are able to jump into the final chapter for today's video, where we do pick up with Electra walking up to the hand. Now, when she does, they're kind of wondering, like, okay, Electra, what are you here for? Like, are you here to rejoin us? 
Are you here to actually help us? Are you here to kill us? Are you here to save the life of this man who apparently loves you? Now for Electra, she kind of plays their game a tad bit, trying to say like, I'm here to be with you guys. But they want to make sure. And so when it comes to the big three of the hand here at the moment, they send one of the big three over to read her mind. The problem is though, right when he tries to read her mind, Sniper takes him out just like that. Carson got her back, and they realize that this is a trap. Now, they do call in some lower-level ninjas to help out with the battle, but for Electra, these lower-level ninjas don't truly stand a chance at all. She is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, but also with the backup, with Carson being a sniper, she has the edge over the entire group. Now, when it comes to Carson, unfortunately, he has to reload. And so while he's trying to reload, but also trying his best to watch out for Electra, the last two standing members of the hand, the big three, one of them goes over to Carson and takes him out. While you have Electra stay behind to fight against the other one. Now, the one she's fighting against, he begins to try to play with her mind, saying like, look, there goes your sniper. We had just killed him off like you cannot win at all. We have the edge over you. Now for Electra, she's able to get rid of him, only leaving one behind. But she realized the one who had just killed off Carson came back, grabbed Jeremy, and went somewhere else in the desert. And so for Electra, she has to follow him to hopefully save the life of Jeremy. And so once she's able to actually catch up to Jeremy and also the last member of the hand, she kind of realized that she's in a position where she technically does not have a choice here when it comes to saving Jeremy because he's now standing between her and also the last member of the hand. And she knows if she moves, he's going to die. But at the same time, she's tired of the hand coming after her. So what can you do? And so for Electra, she says, the only thing she can do is take her blade and take it through the chest of Jeremy as a way to stab the last member of the hand who is trying to come after her. So she has no choice but to go ahead and sacrifice the man who she may or may not actually care for. And the book ends on that note. And so we're kind of left to wonder Will Electra actually go down a new path or because of the death of Jeremy, will she go back down the old path again? Either way, this is where the book ends. And you're kind of left to wonder what would Greg do if he was able to get another story out of this one right here. But yeah. This is the end for Greg Rucka's run on Electra. So with that being said, guys, please leave me a 